We are following the latest developments from Ukraine, where the military says Russian forces are keeping up a high rate of rocket attacks on the front lines in the east. Ukraine says nearly two dozen attacks were carried out in just a 24-hour period, primarily focused in several cities in Donetsk, including Bakhmut and in the Kharkiv region as well. Ukraine's military also says Russia has set records, they say, hitting Ukraine's east with artillery fire, including in the Luhansk region. Now, over the weekend, Ukraine reported a massive barrage of Russian attacks right across the country. Russia says it targeted key energy facilities. Despite that, the Ukrainian capital and several regions were able to avoid power cuts on Sunday. President Volodymyr Zelensky credits those working to restore power. The very fact that after constant terrorist attacks with rockets and Shahed drones, after a massive missile strike this week, we can have such peaceful energy days proves the professionalism of our energy workers and the extraordinary dedication of everyone who works to preserve our energy system. We have to realize this is not yet a decisive victory on the energy front. Unfortunately, there may be new terrorist attacks from Russia. CNN's David McKenzie is following the latest developments for us from uh, Kyiv. In the last several days here in Ukraine, the heaviest fighting has happened on the eastern front of this conflict. Ukrainian and uh, Russian sources even saying that uh, the Russian mechanized brigade trying to push through the town of Volodar saw significant losses. And you see this dramatic video of them being pushed back, uh, sustaining casualties uh, from drone and artillery strikes. Now, the defense intelligence of the United Kingdom saying this is the worst period of casualties for the Russians since the very start of this war. That's hard to stack up, but certainly it's been a very intense period of fighting there. The Russian forces have had, uh, the forces and in fact uh, private military contractors have had somewhat more success to the north of uh, that town in the Bakhmut area, but you're not seeing significant gains of territory in this period of attritional warfare here, here in this conflict. Uh, in Kyiv and the surrounds of the capital, they are saying they've managed to keep the lights on uh, throughout the day, which is a significant achievement, says the energy minister, uh, because of those recent attacks by missiles and drones by the Russians, uh, that many of them, which the Ukrainians managed uh, to shoot down, he also is saying the repair work is enabling them to keep the lights on. It's significant because Russia was looking to break the spirit of uh, Ukrainian civilians by targeting infrastructure, something they haven't been able to achieve. David McKenzie, CNN, Kyiv. CNN's Scott McLean is following developments and joins us in London now with the latest. Scott, the head of the Wagner mercenary group, Prigozhin, has been talking about how essential it is for the Russians to capture Bakhmut if they want to have, I think he said, an easier time basically capturing the rest of the East. What are we hearing about the progress they're making? It's pretty remarkable considering that Bakhmut is a town that surely very few people outside of Ukraine would have mm. even heard of before the war. Now it has this really outsized importance and it's that way for a few reasons. A, it's been really a brick wall for the Russians for months and months who've been trying to capture it. And part of the reason that they've had such difficulty is because it is extremely well fortified, both naturally and militarily. And so the Russians have exhausted a huge number of people, a huge number of equipment actually trying to take it with really no luck. And so as of late, their strategy instead has been to go around it, to try to surround it. And there are some indications that they're having making progress. The Ukrainian military said that there have been fierce battles in towns to the north of Bakhmut and also to the west of Bakhmut as well, which is concerning. The Ukrainians also acknowledge that, look, their access in and out has been sporadic as of late, has been mm. difficult because many of the main routes have been cut off. And now just this morning, we're learning that the Wagner private military contractor claims to have captured this town called Krasnohor, which is just north of Bakhmut. In fact, they've posted a picture with their fighters standing at the southwest corner of the town. And so uh, all of this paints a picture that's not good for the Ukrainians, despite the fact that Ukraine says that, look, it's not uh, the Russians that are wearing down the Ukrainian troops and the Ukrainian mm -hmm. resolve. They say that it's actually the opposite, that the Ukrainians are rushing down the Russians' ability to launch a major attack. But this is pretty optimistic view of mm -hmm. a situation that clearly is very difficult for the Ukrainians. And of course, we've seen this movie before with several towns mm -hmm. in that area where you know, the Russians don't make any huge one fell swoop kind of breakthroughs, but it's just sort of this slow grinding move forward. And mm -hmm. that seems to be what we're seeing now there today.
That's Scott McLean. Thank you.